Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm bringing you a transparent text Photoshop tutorial. So let's get started. We're gonna go ahead and create a new document. This one in particular is gonna be a 2000 by 2000 pixel document at a 72 resolution RGB white. And we're gonna go ahead and click create. So it's gonna just be a basic square. I'm gonna go ahead and set up our background. So I'm gonna just click on that to remove the little lock icon. And then I'm just gonna right click and choose convert to smart object. Once you have that set up, we can double click right here on the little icon to open up the actual smart object. The PSB file extension means that you're inside of a smart object. Inside of the smart object, I'm gonna go ahead and load a few images. So I'm gonna to go to file, place embedded, and then I'll just go to where I have placed all of these images and choose a few. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one. So I'll place this one in here. So you can adjust the size, hold the shift and option key, and then just adjust it until it fits the canvas. And you can adjust it as needed. And I'm gonna add a few more images as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those in and I'll be right back. All right, so I've gone ahead and added three images inside of the smart object. I'll show you why I did that in a little while. I just wanted to get those in there quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off these top two. We'll just go ahead and stick with this one for now. I'm gonna hit Command and the letter S to save this and then just close the smart object. So we're back here in our original document. We have our untitled one. This is the original document. All of the other images are inside of this, but I have them turned off. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this smart object. I'm gonna name it. So this is where our image is placed. I'm gonna right click and I am going to duplicate and I am gonna call this blur. Okay, so I've got a blur layer and I've got an image placement layer. So anything you, you can place anything you want inside of here and because I've copied this smart object here, everything that happens to this smart object is also gonna happen to this one. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna go back in here. Now we're back into our images here. Let me bring this down a little bit because I want you to be able to see what I'm talking about. We'll leave it about that size. We'll bring this one over here. Um, I just wanna show you what's happening here. So this is our original document. This is our smart object here. You can tell with this PSB file extension here. Now I'm gonna turn this layer on. This is inside of the smart object, command and the letter S, and you'll see that it's gonna change that here as well. This is our main document. Now when I come here, and we're actually looking at the blur layer, but you can see that it made those changes to both those layers. I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna turn that off so we can have our original boardwalk layer, Command S to save it. That brought that back up. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. You can see in this original document that our blur layer and our image placement layer are both that same image. The next thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and add a filter here to this blur layer and it's going to be a blur filter so we're going to come up to filter and we will go to blur and Gaussian blur the blur for this one is going to be 10 this is all adjustable because we're adding this filter to a smart object you can always come back and change this so this is not a permanent change we'll click OK because we didn't make this change inside of the smart object, it didn't affect the other object. So if we had made these blur effects inside of the smart object, you would have seen that change in both of the images. So just keep that in mind. Make sure that you're doing uh, all of your filters here and not inside of the smart object. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a text layer. So I'm gonna go over here to my text tool on the side. I'm just gonna type out the word clear. All right, we'll come over to the character panel right here. If you don't have it here on the side, you just come up to window and character. 
and we're using a font called Henny Penny. This is a free font. I'll go ahead and leave you a link down at the bottom to grab this if you like it. And we are gonna make a few adjustments to it. So our text is gonna be 792 pixels with a tracking of negative 20. The color is white. The color for this doesn't really matter, but just if you're following along, I'm using a white color. Okay, so we're gonna move this under here and I'm gonna take this blur layer, hold the option key on my keyboard and you'll see that little down arrow with this white square. You'll just click it once you see that. And we're actually working with the text. So you don't see it right now, you can maybe see it barely. Let me zoom in a little bit. So you can kind of see where it's blurred out a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and enhance that by adding some layer styles. Okay, so I went ahead and changed the picture here because I feel like this one will show up a lot better for this. We're gonna go ahead and add some layer styles here to the text layer. So I'm gonna click on that text layer and I'm gonna come over here to the far right, double click to bring up our layer styles. And in the layer styles, we're gonna go ahead and add a bevel and emboss. The settings for this bevel and emboss are gonna be an inner bevel. Technique is smooth, our depth is 100%, our direction is up, our size is 81 pixels. And our soften is gonna be at seven pixels. Here inside of shading, our angle is gonna be 12 degrees and our altitude is gonna be 74. Our gloss contour is ring double. Highlight mode is screen at 25% and the color there is CBF 5FA. Now these colors are gonna depend entirely on the image that you're using. So you want colors that are gonna complement the image that you're working with. So if you're using an image with a lot of reds and oranges in it, you're probably not gonna use these cool tone colors for your highlights and shadows. So this is just something to keep in mind. This is gonna work very well with cool toned images, but not necessarily for warm tones. So you'll have to pick colors from your image. You can kind of see how uh, we've got some colors here that are coming directly from the image. So let's go over to the shadow mode, multiply, opacity 25%, and the color that we're using here is 0B4661. And that's pretty much everything for the bevel and emboss. We're gonna go ahead and add a contour here as well. For the contour, we want that range to be all the way up to 100% and we're using a half round contour here. That's gonna be this one right here. All right, we're gonna move on to inner glow. By the way, if you don't see something here that we're gonna be using, you can come over here to the little FX icon and you'll get the rest of the effects or the layer styles down here. So we're gonna go with inner glow. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that off. And our settings for the inner glow are gonna be blend mode screen, opacity 60%, noise zero. Our color, we're using a solid color and it is white, FFF, FFF. Technique is softer. Our source is gonna be the edge, so we want this to be around uh, the edges, but not necessarily in the middle, because we want that to look more clear. Our choke is going to be 15, size is 30 pixels, our contour is half round, and our range is 80%. So that's for our inner glow. And now we'll go ahead and move on to the pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and check off the pattern. If you are in Photoshop 2020, just stick with me and I'm gonna show you how to add your patterns in in a minute for everyone else. You'll just uh, click on the little gear and you're gonna see all of your patterns here, default patterns, legacy patterns, are gonna be in this menu. I'm working in Photoshop 2020, so I don't have that anymore, but if you are working with anything before 2020, it's gonna be right here. Uh, for our patterns, let me back up a little bit. So for the patterns, we're gonna be using the legacy patterns and more, or just legacy patterns for anybody that is not in 2020. 
and I'm gonna come over here to my legacy patterns and you have default or legacy default patterns those aren't the ones that we want we actually want the legacy patterns so it won't have the word default in it we're gonna be using just the basic legacy patterns probably these are already going to be installed if you have anything other than 2020 uh, but just in case you can come over here to the little gear and grab it there the pattern that we're going to be using is fine grain and the scale uh, we're gonna we can leave it at 100 for the video you might find this to be a little bit too much when you're actually looking at it you know on your screen so you can go 75 and that's gonna bring it down a little bit but for the screen it's uh, or for the video it's gonna be really difficult to see so I'm gonna leave it at 100 uh, percent of course you can always adjust these depending on the type that you're using and the strength of the pattern that you want to have. So we'll go ahead and leave that at 100%. And I'm going to come over to Drop Shadow and go ahead and add a Drop Shadow there as well. Settings for our Drop Shadow, our Blend Mode is Multiply, and I'm using a very dark blue color 023040. Opacity is 50%. Our angle is 120. I'm going to turn off global light and just make that 120. Our distance is 12. Our spread is 5. And our size is 24 pixels. We're using just a basic linear contour and 0% noise. And this is uh, what we have so far. If you're in Photoshop 2020, you'll come over to Window. Make sure that your patterns are up. And you won't see this if you don't already have them installed. So we're going to come over to this little hamburger menu and we're choosing Legacy Patterns and More. When you choose that, that's going to add those patterns. I'm going to add a little bit more to this. So what I'm going to do is take the text layer, right click and duplicate this layer just a copy of it and I'm gonna bring it above everything else so when you when you're looking at it here you it looks or it gives the illusion that it's clear um, but it's actually not it's just this blur layer inside of the text we've clipped that into the text now you can just use this text if you're using uh, solid colors or anything like that you can actually come over here to the fill and bring it all the way down and you're going to get a similar effect so i wanted to give you some options on how to do this i'm going to take this a little bit further on that clear look that we're going for and we're going to make it look more like a block of ice by adding a few icicles to this so we're going to take this copy of the text and go into the layer style so i'm going to double click there just to bring up those layer styles i'm going to remove all of this stuff right here the bevel and emboss contour inner glow pattern and drop shadow are all going to be gone and we're only going to use a stroke for this one our the size of our stroke is going to be two pixels position is outside blend mode is normal opacity we're going to bring up to 100 percent and we're using the color white which is fff fff i'm going to click ok for that I'm going to turn those two off there so that we can see this and I'm going to take our fill down to zero. So this is all I want to see at this point. Now I'm going to right click and choose rasterize layer style. Okay, with our rasterize layer, we're going to come up to edit, transform, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. You'll see why I'm doing that here in a minute. Now we're going to come up to filter stylize and we're using wind inside of the wind dialog box our method is wind and our direction is from the right now you can see that we only have options for uh, direction from the right or left we don't have up and down which is why we rotated it in this way so we're going to go ahead and leave it from the right which is going to take it uh, from the top to the bottom we're going to click OK you can see uh, where that is right there we're going to come back up to filter and we're going to use our last filter it's going to have exactly the same settings 
So we'll click it again. So you can do it once or twice and maybe even three times, it's up to you. We're gonna go ahead and leave it at twice and then I'm gonna come back up to edit, transform, and we're gonna go rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. That's basically gonna take it back to where we started. And I'm gonna turn this one on so that I can see where it is. Letter V on the keyboard and then I'm just gonna to try to match that up as closely as possible. And I'm using my keyboard arrows here um, just to get it matched up as, as closely as I can to uh, this text. Now, if I had uh, created a smart object from this uh, to add that filter, this wind effect would actually still be going from left to right or right to left. And that's not what I want. What I want it to do is go downward so that it looks like icicles. So now that I have that there, I can click on that top layer. I'm gonna press the Option key on my keyboard and I'm gonna hover here above the, the layer below it. When I get that arrow and the square, I'm just gonna click. So now that's inside of there, I'm gonna turn that blur layer back on. And you can see that my icicles are now part of that text effect. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this. So you can see up here in this area, and actually uh, what I'm gonna do is grab this one, hold my command key and grab the other text layer, right click, and I'm going to link those two layers because I wanna move this, but I want those two to stay together. If you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel and visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.